talking about? Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Hey everybody, welcome into the arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. This is episode 130. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. Burley and Carl, how you doing? How how are how have you been this week? Good. <laughs> As always. No, As always, okay. I hope I'm always That's good. awesome. Yeah. Burley, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I actually slept almost like nine hours last night. So it was nine hours. Nice to get, yeah. He yeah said you almost. younglings, man, you guys can <laughs> can actually do that. I mean, you know, it's like people my age. We after like four or five hours, we just wake up. You know, oh, I, I used to live on for four hours of sleep. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That so anyway, yeah. So we got a great show for you. We're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to be talking about Sega. Sega had some big news this week. Uh, PlayStation had some more news as well. Uh, Nintendo had an Indie World Showcase. We're going to be showing you the, the indie games, so lots of indies to show for you uh, that uh, that came out this uh, week. Uh, of course, uh, there was some, uh, uh, some rumblings about Hi-Fi Rush, the game uh, that uh, came out on Game Pass. We're going to be talking about that a little bit as well. And then, of course, our topic of the show, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is going to be coming out this coming week. And of course, uh, we're going to be talking about what we would like to see uh, for the Star Wars franchise in the video game uh, end of things uh, into the future, uh, what we would like to see. So that's going to be our topic of the show. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into all of that and uh, before we get into what we've been playing this past week, here is a brief word about where you can find the podcast in video and audio formats. Before the crew discuss what they have been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, ad-free version in audio and video formats, will be going to Patreon after being recorded. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier one level at $1 per month, you get every episode including exclusive ad-free post-show content in video format when recorded. Please visit patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast for further details. The audio version of the podcast will be uploaded to all free podcast services where you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android. And in the video version, will be on our YouTube channel, The Arena Productions. For the audio version, just download your favorite podcast app and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like. If that feature is available there, then spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Podcast, where you can join and chat with The Arena Podcast community, and the podcast audio website is at thearenapodcast.podbean.com, where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. For all information regarding the podcast and our entertainment and pop culture-related content, along with our blog and forums, visit the official website of The Arena Productions at www.thearenaproductions.com. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at The Arena, A-M-P-G-N-P, as well as on Instagram at The Arena underscore podcast. Now, back to the show. Okay, guys, uh, I'll talk about what I've been playing. I, I briefly had a chance to play some games this week because uh, we're so busy with all the, the content over on uh, over here on uh, the Arena Productions uh, with uh, our Star Wars and our Star Trek content. But uh, what I did get a chance to play, and I completely like forgot about it for a while, but uh, the last DLC content for Assassin's Creed Valhalla came out like in November last year. And uh, mm -hmm. I just decided to go back to it and play it. It's like called The Last Journey. I think that's what it's called. But, uh, you know, it, and it's interesting uh, as as you play the the DLC, there is a particular character in the in the story of this final DLC that, uh, you know, uh, is a particular character in an upcoming Assassin's Creed game. 
so uh yeah i mean i'm, I'm just playing that uh, you have to have leveled up your village ravensthorpe to at least level five i think it is to be able oh, to wow. do this yeah and you have well, that's to, a lot of grinding yeah that's a lot of grinding uh well i i've put i put over 110 hours into the game so i mean yeah and uh you had to finish all of the 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 main story quests and things like that so yeah i mean it's it's fun um it'll probably take another couple hours to finish but uh I was doing that. So it's it's so, more of Avor. I'm playing as Avor, you know, the, the female uh, protagonist. So uh, it's yeah. the you're talking about the character who's in Mirage. For yes, the other character that, that yeah, he's Not kind like of a oh, him. Uh, yeah, I, I mean I just okay. <laughs> there you go, Carl. Yes, yes. Yeah, Bassam. Yes, Bassam, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bassam, he, he is uh... in yeah, he is in this DLC. Yeah. Well, how do you uh, feel about this character? Tell me about him a little bit, because I'm curious. Well, for those for those who have not played Assassin's Creed Valhalla, anyway, Bassem is a is an assassin, but but it, they're not the Assassin's Order yet. They're called the Hidden Ones, because okay. this is still like in the 900s, uh, and so it's another 200 years before they actually become the Assassin's Order under the original. Altair character from the first game, uh, which is in Istanbul. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so he is kind of like a mentor to to Avor through the game. Uh, but then you know something else happens later on. And I don't want to spoil it for for those of yeah. who have not played the game. But anyway, so they decided, uh, th you know, Assassin's Creed Mirage was supposed to be a DLC, like a big DLC to Valhalla, because it's basically Bassem's backstory, right? You know, and how he joined the Hidden Ones and all. But then they decided to make it a full on game, uh, and so uh, of course they have to put him at the in this DLC, this final DLC, because of uh, some of the things that happened towards the end of uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla's main story. So that's all I'm going to say. But uh, yeah, so. When, when do you guys think we're going to see that game again? It's, it's been a while. Uh, well, yeah, probably in the next couple of months. I mean, you know, it's supposed to be coming soon. Uh, you're, you're talking about... Uh, Mirage, yeah. Mirage, yeah. So because they uh, haven't shown it, and uh, it supposedly was this year, but I don't know if they've said it's not this year anymore. Uh, I think I, it's going to be this year. Um, I think yeah. around when E3, when yeah. they're going to do their kind of E3 event, yeah. yeah, I think that's when we'll get some actual gameplay and tr more trailer footage of Mirage. Right, right. Because uh, Mirage, I think, has like a date for like September or something like tentatively yeah. around there. Last I remember I checked. Yeah. I so. hope it's a big hit. And then Square Enix is like, oh, we can go back to the old style of our big franchise. All right. Let's yeah. But it. when it comes to the Assassin's Creed <laughs> franchise, I mean, uh, everybody's waiting for the, the Japanese game. You know, so, I'm sure that uh, one will be really good. Yeah, we, we shall see. But anyway, I am curious in the mobile like China one, too, just just because. It's a different Ugh, aesthetic. Mobile. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really want to play on mobile, but just it's gonna it look it's probably gonna be you know like a high quality looking game that you're gonna be like, oh, why is that on mobile only? Yeah, well, it, it all of you that haven't played the 2D uh, Assassin's Creed games, the one uh, based on China, and then there was one based mm -hmm. on India and then Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, I highly recommend those as well. They're more platformers than anything, but still, they're good games. Uh, uh, I highly recommend them. So, and those remind me of like the old like Prince of Persia games, the original. Yeah. So, uh, all right, um, Burley, what have you been playing this past week? <laughs> I I know what <laughs> you're playing, but anyway, go uh, ahead and talk about it. I finished off our RE4 remake. Mm -hmm. That was that was a lot a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I overall enjoyed the remake and can recommend it. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, I would just wait. For the price the price point that they're putting for this, you do definitely if you really loved uh, RE2 remake mm -hmm. and you bought that like on day one, I think you'll really enjoy RE4 remake and you'll get your money's worth. But nice. for the majority, I can say just just wait. Like I like the new request system of the challenges in each chapter you're doing 
to get the extra little treasure that you can trade to the merchant to get extra things. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the game, I really like that. It's kind of nice is if you have leftover treasure and you don't have of this kind of treasure and you don't have enough for what you want, mm-hmm. some of the bigger stuff, you can either save it for like a new game plus run, or you can use it. He'll have like these items of like, you can buy gun ammo or first aid sprays. Nice. So that way you're not, if you're low on money, you're still, you still have a chance. Nice. Nice. Uh, I've also played the F- Horizon Forbidden West DLC, Burning Shores. Now, did you finish it? Is it? Is I have it, not. I have not okay, finished no, the story, finished right. and I've got about seven hours in. Yeah, yeah, that's my next game. Yeah, so. yeah, the, yeah, that yeah. D- that it, it is. It, if you like Horizon Forbidden West, yes, you will like this DLC. I'll go into more details later on. That DLC. Yeah. Nice, nice. Can Carl, you how about you, man? Quick, quick question on it. Can you feel any sort of difference in it being like PS5 only versus the other one, which had last gen? Yeah, good question. Uh, I, I can't really, in, in all honesty, I can't really notice much difference that this is PS5 only, yeah. that this needed to be PS5 only. Like this, in my opinion, from what I've been played so far, could have come to the PS4 as the downgraded version with the longer load time. And mm-hmm. not as pretty graphics, graphically, because okay. graphically this just looks like really good. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 Horizon. Yeah, I mean it's beautiful. So, yeah. All right, how about you, Carl? Just Persona Four Golden. <laughs> it's still, still <laughs> plug, going through it's plugging that. away. Yeah. Plugging Are you away. at the forty-hour mark yet? Uh, I'll tell you Pass in a it. second. I guess. Okay. Um, so, when you know, another thing. Remember how I was saying like. Man, there's just so many similarities. Like, there, yeah. there's also, a, I, and I, I kind of saw him a little bit, but like now I'm yeah. into that part of the game. There's like this detective character, and I'm like, come on, oh, yeah. like, what's up with the this yeah. weird like idea of these like underage detectives in Japan? Is that a thing? Like, what? Why? <laughs> well, everybody, everybody spies on everybody out here. I guess <laughs> it's just Whoa. when it comes to kids and stuff. I mean. <laughs> If there was a kid who was like going around in America claiming he's detective, they'd be like, "What the hell are you talking about? Like you're freaking." Yeah, I mean, (laughs) but I mean, Persona Persona Five was basically you know built off of Persona Four Golden as a structure. I mean, yeah. I am at let's see, forty forty nine hours. Forty nine. All right. Almost. Okay, so he's at the second dungeon now. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, like. it's probably like six or so I've already got run through if I had to guess. Uh-huh. Wow, that's I've, that's more than, than I've hit in Persona at the yeah. same Persona five at the same time amount yeah. of time. Wow. Is it five yeah. or six? Because they're you know, they get pretty they're very simple. I mean, even this like last one, like like they try to add a little bit of something in a couple of them that makes it a little different than just like yeah. go through the random thing, find the stairs, go to the next floor, go to the next floor, go to the next floor until you get to the boss occasionally like this one had like you go i got up to like some floor or whatever number higher up and then it's like oh you can't go through this door it's locked you need a thing yeah so you got to find like this key and then you and it found the key and then it's like oh it's not for this door it was for another door on a lower level i'm like oh okay so i got to go back to that level and then i got to fight some boss thing and then go back up and it's just like well okay but really all that amounts to is just like more floors <laughs> you know if you think about it like, it could have just had 13 floors instead of me going to like six and then back down to four and then back up to nine <laughs> like yeah 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 so like it's it's not bad like it's you just get into a rhythm and it's fine um uh but you know it's it's still a great game it's it's these such like good character driven like i care about uh the the characters what they're doing in their lives and the, the main plot is cool and I like it, but like, yeah. there's not a lot of games where it's like, oh yeah, like I just, I just enjoying the characters hanging out and like doing their thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I, uh, I highly I, recommend if you don't know about this anime uh, in Japan, it's called Detective Conan. Mm-hmm. Um, and Conan is a boy and he's a child prodigy and he's a detective. There you go. Oh, and he's so not a barbarian. Stores. No, he's not a barbarian, Burley. No, yeah, I, I, I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, I mean, when you think of Conan, you think of Conan the barbarian out here in the West. But no, he's not a barbarian. He's a little child prodigy, and he's a detective. 
and uh yeah the, he was in the in the animes and in the comic books and and mm-hmm. movies yeah so it was very popular out here in japan so I, I got my my waifu already you know <laughs> the waifu yeah i, yeah. Oh, I picked, I picked nice. my girl and i'm not <laughs> cheating all right i'm not going i'm only doing the one uh-huh. no. uh-huh. cool all right you maxed out your jack frost persona no who cares about jack frost <laughs> It's one one but, of the best one of the funny, best personas, funny. and he's also one of the uh, the uh, mascots of the series. Yeah, he is. He he. There's like I noticed. I don't know why, but like I just a, love him. I know. I don't know what I was thinking, but I saw somewhere like was it in this game or was it a different one where where he was on like a vending machine, and I'm like, oh, so like, what's the context of like Jack Frost as a as a mascot within the persona like a regular world? I'm curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so those are the games that we've been playing. So now it's time to get into the weekly news beat. So first story uh, came earlier this week. And of course, uh, Sega is going to buy Rovio. Yeah, so Rovio obviously is uh, the company that's uh, that develops Angry Birds. And they're huge in the mobile space. And so uh, I'm going to read a little bit of this article for you here uh, from Video Games Chronicle. So uh, an official press release, Sega Sammy Holdings stated that it plans to make a tender offer to acquire, quote, the entirety of Rovio's outstanding shares and options, end quote. This will cost Sega a total of 776 million U.S. dollars, notably lower than the one billion reported by The Wall Street Journal. The acquisition is considered a, a, quote, friendly takeover, end quote, as Sega states that, quote, Rovio's board of directors has agreed to and express support towards the tender offer. Sega expect, expects to close the deal by, quote, the second quarter of fiscal year 2024, end quote, which means it should be complete by September of this year. According to its statement, Sega has acquired the Angry Birds studio to bolster its own live service mobile game por- portfolio. It wants to use, quote, Rovio's distinctive know-how in live service mobile game operation to bring Sega's current and new titles to the global mobile gaming market where there is large potential, end quote. At the same time, Sega also claims that Rovio wants to go beyond mobile games and wants to help it accomplish this. Quote, Rovio is aiming to expand its platform outside of mobile gaming, and Sega will actively look to support this process through its capabilities, end quote. Sega Sammy Holdings president and group CEO Haruki Satomi said, quote, among the rapidly growing global gaming market, the mobile gaming market has especially high potential, And it has been Sega's long-term goal to accelerate its expansion in this field. Quote, I feel blessed to be able to announce such a transaction with Rovio, a company that owns Angry Birds, which is loved across the world and home to many skilled employees that support the company's industry-leading mobile game development and operating capabilities. End quote. So, guys, uh, yeah, the mobile gaming space, Angry Birds is huge globally. And I, I just want to say to all of you listeners and viewers out there, happy Earth Day. So uh, do what you can to uh, to to keep our planet clean on this day. Uh, so but I want to ask you guys, uh, uh, how big is this acquisition for Sega? Uh, let's let's start with that first. Uh, Burley, I'll start with you. Hmm. This is big for Sega. So this. This shows to me they're really wanting to really push in mobile. Like I know they've been doing mobile games over the over the last like ten years, but a lot of their mobile games I don't th- feel have gone over well. So why do it yourself when you have a company that has done it quite well? Angry Birds was super hugely popular, and there's been like I don't know what like thirty different Angry Birds games now by now. Mm-hmm. So why not get them? And we and I made the little joke in our little Discord chat. When they get them in September, October is uh, Persona Angry Birds, and November is yeah. Yeah. Sonic Angry Birds. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carl, how big of an acquisition is this for Sega to plunge into the mobile gaming market? I mean, yeah, I, I guess that's the the real thing. It's, it's a, everybody wants to get into mobile, right? It's a big deal now. Make sure that that's part of your, I guess, like gaming publishing portfolio. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I, I kind of don't really see it. Like, I do see, I understand, like, this This seems like it makes sense. Like, I, when I think of Angry Birds, I'm like, yeah, that feels like that could be a Sega IP, you know? And, yeah, I, I see the potential to, like, all right, yeah, does Sonic have a, a good mobile presence yet? I don't think so. So if you can get Robio to develop a really good popular Sonic mobile game, that makes sense. But I don't know. Has any of this actually happened or worked out before? I, I don't I don't think so, right? Has any has anybody uh, like we bought this big mobile company and they turned our other IP into like a big successful like No, this would make precedence, franchise. I think. Yeah. Yeah, like because Microsoft's doing it with ABK, like the King side. Like, is King gonna say, all right, some of you yeah. candy crush people, you right. work on Halo, you know, Halo Crush or something. <laughs> Halo Crush, yeah. yeah. Oh like, god, I, Carl, don't give them these ideas. Don't <laughs> gears gears crush. I mean, yeah, like, right. you know, so like I don't I don't know. Like, is that gonna work? Her, her, forza Forza Horizon uh, Forza Horizon Crush, where you use the cars to crush down the candy yeah. block. I mean, look, Sega. What can I? Can we get uh, you know Persona Five Phantom X in in the U U.S. and anywhere else outside of China? Like, why? Why are you letting that just go to China and China only? <laughs> yeah, that, well, that I'm sure like that'll it. come come over. Eventually. Yeah, and it might. Well, I looked this... up. I looked up the company who makes it, and, it, and they they have had other games come to the U.S. So. Well, Carl, what what uh, what company? Uh, does Sega own that uh, you're playing the game of right now? Atlas? Yeah. So just think, have an Atlas mobile. Have a Persona Persona 6 mobile. Well, that's what I was just like saying. That. There's yeah. already a yeah. Persona 5 mobile game, but it's not made. They just outsourced but, it to some Chinese company who wanted but to But just think it. if now the, the Rovio people can actually work on that and, uh, and help with that. Yeah, yeah then it'll awesome. be some like crappy like you know, <laughs> angry bird <laughs> sort of like you know that's the thing is yeah. like angry birds like that to me it feels like i don't know a decade ago like what, what yeah. is like I, does anybody play angry birds still today i don't i don't understand the, i feel like angry birds i haven't played it since i was in college okay okay yeah. so that's that's you people in the west talking but out here in japan i'm sure there's a ton of kids so on their i mobile. on their iPads mm -hmm. on their iO on you know, on their Apple devices that are playing Angry Birds, because wasn't it was in Angry Birds two where they changed the like monetization of it right? It wasn't like Angry Birds the other ones where you just bought it and you had all the things like it was like your typical you know gotcha type thing I guess I don't know where you had like gotcha and earn, bought, buy more maps yeah, and, yeah whatever and right. Like yeah. And, and and then I didn't they didn't they like have, didn't they like yeah we're shutting down like Angry Birds one because like not enough people are playing or buying in Angry Birds two yeah. they're just playing that yeah. instead I'm like yeah because yeah. that was that's how we like that and you you can't just take something away and change it to something different expect it to well, work yeah I just think well, just, I mean because because mobile mobile gaming is so big internationally i i think you're gonna see more of this where you're gonna see like the segas the microsoft's the playstations trying to to gobble up a lot of these huge mobile developing companies like the triple a of mobile i'll say um yeah. you know to to yeah. get into that space uh because yeah to be able to compete uh in the future especially in the mobile space which is going to be huge even bigger than it is now I think we're going to see more of this happening, more acquisitions of this type. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone's doing it. You know, Microsoft, like I said, Sony's got their mobile stuff that they've built and they've bought someone. And, you know, yeah. Heck, Nintendo's done it with Mario Run and all that. Right, and they they've had you know some Pokemon success, and some things that didn't, you know. Because mobile is is a, I mean, every, all video gaming, it's all fickle. You never know what's going to work, and that's not. Yeah. Oh, who who knows? Maybe with this, they'll bring back a franchise of yours that I know you really would love to see, Shining Force on mobile. Which they tried, and then that yeah. just got canceled. I was yeah. depressed because I looked actually really good. I like the the design that they were going with. Yeah. Well, speaking of another acquisition. Uh, PlayStation, uh, 
still playing around with uh, buying studios that they've had long-term relationships with. So this time Firewalk Studios is joining the mix yeah. with PlayStation. I, would, I wouldn't say long term on this one, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, for years. I'll just put it that way. So mm. anyway, so uh, PlayStation uh, has agreed to purchase, uh, to acquire AAA multiplayer developer Firewalk Studios. And here is the link to the story from GameIndustry.biz, which I'll read a little bit of it for you. PlayStation has agreed to acquire Firewalk Studios, a AAA multiplayer developer that is working on live service games for PS5 and PC. If the name sounds familiar, it's because Sony had already announced it would be publishing Fireworks or uh, Firewalks, I'm sorry, first game back in April of 2021. It is the third dedicated live service game studio that PlayStation has acquired over the last 18 months alongside yeah. Bungie and Haven Studios. Uh, so obviously I think this could be a reaction to the Microsoft deal with, uh, you know, with King. Yeah, it could be as well. So Firewalk was set up in uh, in 2018 as part of probably uh, probably Monsters, a collective of AAA game developers. It was formed by a number of Bungie veterans, including studio head Tony Shu, previously Grand uh, General Manager and Senior Vice President of Destiny and Activision and game director Ryan Ellis, previously creative director at Bungie. It now boasts almost 150 employees. Firewalk is the 20th developer to join PlayStation Studios. So Carl, I'll start with you on this. Uh, how significant of an acquisition is this for PlayStation? Uh, it's like a, like a zero out of 10? <laughs> like, who cares? No. I, um... That's, you know, it's the Xbox guy and you talking right there. I know it right there, man. All right, all right. One, one out of ten. Here's the thing. With one this. point, one point two five. Okay. The thing with this is that That's like too high. This is I, I look at this as very risky. Um, it could work out. It could it could end up being great. And we don't know what they paid for this uh, because these these smaller deals they just don't talk about. And actually, this isn't it's not a publicly traded thing, so they don't have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but. You know, and they're like, oh, it's a triple A studio. Like, are they? Are they? They've made nothing. So, I mean, what the hell? Do, what are you getting? I guess they like the what the progress is of the game that they already like purchased for exclusivity mm -hmm. previously. <laughs> so they're happy with it and they, they like, let's let's uh, put a ring on it, you know? <laughs> but I don't know. It, it like, you got you get, like did someone it's someone's cashing out early right like think about like these guys like oh yeah we built this studio and we started making a game and sony's like came to us and they liked it like, they, they they acquired our, our uh, exclusivity on our game and then they're like here's a whole buttload of cash for the whole thing and they're like cool we haven't made anything yet thanks that's awesome well um, i mean this i'll this be a studio, now. <laughs> this Great. studio is you know they're they're really good at making mul multiplayer games, live service they, games, and they've made nothing. <laughs> I, I think more expats is meaning with the people because you've got people yeah. from Bungie and all over here. Right. I get that, but like a yeah. handful of people who have experience and then like building a new studio who and they've never worked together and they've never built a game. Like I, I have no idea what to expect. I mean, well, it seems like PlayStation. That, right? It seems like PlayStation is trying to jump more into the live service space. So. For sure, and I yeah. I get that, right? And that's why I also don't really care what this studio is making because I'm not going to play something like that. But they they bought okay, they bought uh, who are the other ones? Uh, Haven and and Haven. Bungie. Ha Haven's a Canadian. Haven and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. But what I was going to say is okay. Haven's another one with some people who are you know like industry vets. Who were who building a studio who never put a game out yet. And Sony's like, all right, we're going to buy you. And uh, Savage Game Studios, a bunch of like, you know, mobile veterans who are building a team who never put a game out yet. And Sony bought them. I mean, it's weird. You know, all those could end up great. All those could end up dumpster fires, you know. Um, Blue, even Blue Point, like, sort of in that realm of like, they've never made a game. Uh, an original IP. They've never designed a video game. They've only done remakes. But they do good um, remakes. Yeah, they do. They do. But like, does that mean that they can design a really cool original game? I don't know. We'll see. 
<laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's move over to Burley here. Burley, you're more of the PlayStation guy here, obviously. So how big of an acquisition is this for PlayStation? This isn't very big, in, in my uh, opinion. Mm. This, this is just them. We already have two studios in for live service. Let's double down. We can get them on the cheap now. Mm. Get them on the cheap. Hope it really pays off. They're 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 really going in live service. I'm not I'm not huge on live service because ninety percent of the time I feel it's like I play for a couple hours and be like, okay, this is just a waste of my time, mm -hmm. and never never want never again go back to these games. Mm -hmm. It's like you already had Haven, you already had Bungie. I think this was enough. That was enough. This mm -hmm. studio, yeah, you already had exclusivity probably on their first game. Mm -hmm. that's in develop we don't know what it is mm -hmm. great yeah you had the exclusivity i would have just waited to see how that game performs before and then go to go buy them and still i feel this is just a waste of money i would have saved that money mm -hmm. go for some other bigger studios that have a better track record mm -hmm. because i have to agree a little bit with carl you may have industry vets in here this studio hasn't made anything and you don't know because one person's from that company, one person's from another company. How are they going to be able to work together? No, over here at there, we, we did it this way. I don't, well, we at Bungie didn't do it that way. So we're not going to do it the way you did it. Yeah. You never, you never know. Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess they have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, faith in, in these developers and, and what they can, what they can produce. And so it's a, I guess for Sony, it's a long-term investment. Uh, we shall see what happens. But, yeah. uh, I, mean, I will say like, I get it. It makes sense. If you're building what we think is probably a live service game, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't own that studio, that's problematic because in the future, you need them to keep working on the game. And what if someone else comes along and it's like, well, we're going to pay you to, to make something else because yeah. we love what you did. And now they're not available to keep doing work on your Nintendo goes by them and says, you can't have it on PlayStation. No more, no more updates <laughs> for the PlayStation version only for the switch Two. <laughs> yes. The switch yeah. Two, the yeah. greatest console. <laughs> Ooh, Carl's ripping into Nintendo now. Ooh. Yeah, I got, I gotta get out of uh, Xbox. You know, everybody's, everybody's jumping ship right now. It looks like everything's <laughs> burning in flames at the moment because of small, okay. tiny stories that come out. <laughs> come to PlayStation. You'll, you'll be better off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. All right, guys. It's time to talk about some indie games. So we had uh, the Indie World Showcase. That came out uh, this past week, and uh, from IGN, the the article of uh, all the games that were announced, and we're going to show you those games here. Uh, and uh, of course, I'll read a little bit of the uh, of the information about some of the games, and of course, uh, we'll uh, react to them as we show them. And for you audio listeners, I'm going to play some background music for you as well, for you video viewers as well here. Uh, as we uh, go through the games and we discuss them. So let's go ahead and get into them. So first up, let me go ahead and get this started here. Okay, so first game, Mineko's Night Market. Okay, Mauza Games, long in development, finally uh, finally received a release date as part of the Indie World Showcase's opening act. First announced way back in 2015, Mineko's Night Market turned heads with its beautifully uh, watercolor graphics, uh, focusing on uh, Japanese mythology and hordes of cats. It will cast players as Mineko as they explore craft objects, befriend townsfolk, and take part in the local night market. Where they can sell virtually everything they find. So, guys, what do you think? I am curious about what actually you do in this game because I'm watching this video for the first time and just kind of waiting to see what you do. Mm -hmm. you walk around I the really... town, you could probably sell stuff, uh, find stuff, mm -hmm. interact with cat shrines. Yeah. yeah. The, the art style, I like the art style. It is. It's nice. unique. Yeah. 
Yep, the the you got the Nico monkeys there. Yeah, in the, in the winter season. And so, yeah. Yeah. cutting flowers right, getting them to be sold. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Also announced for PC. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the full version will land on Nintendo the Switch. Switch. Uh, the full version will land on the Switch uh, in the summer. So. I don't have oh, wait, a release date also yet. coming to they see they didn't they didn't say everything according to this other article playstation and xbox as well hmm. i gotta know which ones well, i care go. about you know because they're on the 26th. platform that, that i care about okay. <laughs> that's mean <laughs> okay my time at sandrock uh, lands in the summer so the Nintendo Switch version of My Time at Sandrock received an extended showing here at the showcase where developer uh, Pathea Games narrowed its official release window while talking about the inspiration it draws from the Gobi Desert. Currently in early access over on Steam, My Time at Sandbox is a follow-up to My Time at Portia, allowing players to assemble machines, build up their workshop, and customize their home. There's so many games like this. It's like... You know, yeah. it, it, come on, Carl. There's... That's what people like to do. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I mean, during, especially, really during, the, life, their life. especially during the COVID, the COVID era. I mean, you know, during COVID times when people couldn't go outside, these are the only type of games they played. Basically. Yeah, and I'm not saying these aren't fun. I, I, I like this. Some of these games for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, look, the Game Pass just got Homestead Arcana, which is another one of these sort of, you know, yeah. farming building whatever you know but you're a witch in that one like all right great no, okay here comes another one played up combines overcooked with roguelike mechanics what if overcooked were, were a roguelike management sim that's a oh, premise God. behind played up oh, yeah <laughs> a yog cast published game first released on steam back in 2022 like overcooked played up teams up to four chefs via local or online multiplayer but with the added ability to create, decorate, and automate the restaurant of your dreams. Yeah. With items like turbo ovens. The ultimate goal is to survive 15 days while serving increasingly fickle customers. Mm. Launches in October. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've had my issues with Overcook. Trying to make it a roguelike with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh. No. Not for me, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not for me, but I like the tur the turbo ovens and stuff. I think it'd be really neat. But mm -hmm. like these games get chaotic enough. I don't know if anyone here has actually sat and played any of the Overcooks. Yeah, I played, I a, played a little bit of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They can get chaotic on the harder levels, and then if you're playing with someone that knows what they're doing, and then there's me that sucks at this, it gets crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a fun party game. I, yeah, these things are. They look. I mean, this looks like a mobile game to me. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. All right. Next up, Quilts and Cats of Calico. Board game fans will be familiar with Calico, a charming board game in which you score points by creating patterns that attract cats. Quilts and Cats of Calico, an official video game adaptation of uh, by Monster Couch, visualizes the original board game with a soft-looking quality, or are quilty and fully animated and customizable cats. Featuring local and online multiplayer, ranked matches, and weekly challenges, it looks to be a robust addition to Nintendo's local multiplayer lineup out in the fall. It's an actual you can customize game, the cats. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, cool. Fair. It's like what the actual board game looks like. Ten out of ten because you can customize the cats. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god, rhythm based. Yeah. Oh, this thing, yeah. Yeah. So Rift of the Necro Dancer. So a spin-off of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Rift is a rhythm game with lane based combat, powerful monsters, and boss fights. So Rift of the Necrodancer will feature multiple characters and a new storyline, and it figures to be one of 2023's uh, standout <laughs> games when Brace Yourself Games releases it later this year. It looks the animation cool. and art style looks really good. Yeah. 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 
Exactly. Actually, it does remind me of like Hi Fi Rush in, in some ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that, Carl. Yeah, the, the animation style there. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, mm-hmm. I like the little goob monsters there on the lanes. And yeah. the things changing on the lanes. That's that's neat to keep you guessing of really keep the rhythm going. But it's like knowing me and my lack of rhythm, this is yeah. this is not a game for me. Yeah. Watch other people play it. Yeah. Yoga, yoga rhythm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Little to the left, cupboards and drawers DLC. So this this was not in the article here. So this is one of the games that they really they didn't mention. <laughs> I can see why. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was about to say the cry. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Well, it's, it was uh, l- l- omitted on purpose. Yeah. Uh, well, this is self-explanatory by just watching this. Yeah, I, I get get it. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> already done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, shovel knight pocket dungeon puzzlers pack DLC. So this this also was not in the article either. So, uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So just be. So I think know, it's because no. of DLC. That's why. Yes. Yeah, we've known about this for a while. They've. Yeah. That covers one. It makes me think of unpacking. I don't know uh-huh. if it's like as as like a chill game like that. Yeah. yeah. Is that something you're you're gonna sit and play with your daughter? The put away things here. Yes. That's how you teach her. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, ah, Cult of the Lamb DLC. <laughs> yep. Just yep. cool like animation. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a game I relics will pick of the old one. faith. Yeah. Update. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, and it's a it's actually a free update. This uh, Cult of the Lamb. You don't pay for this. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. So more content for free. Yeah. Always a good thing. Yeah. These levels here. Yeah. This is the first time I've actually seen the gameplay. <laughs> like I've just heard yeah. about it, but I've never actually seen it. Yeah. Okay, next up, Animal Well, confirmed for early uh, 2024. Shared memory and big mode share Animal Well, a pixelated game in which you play as what seems to be a tiny meatball exploring a dense, interconnected labyrinth. The maze is filled with many dangers, including animals that will try to eat you, but items will help you escape. The atmospheric puzzler will be out in early 2024. Carl, you were going to say something? That was funny. He was getting eaten. (laughs) Yeah. And it looks cute. Yeah. yeah. Cute little Metroidvania. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Ooh, yo-yo. Yeah. There you go. Animal well. All right. Yep. And next up is uh, Crime O'Clock. Mm. So this new crime solving game stretches across time and space featuring cases set in era like the lost age and quote cybernetic future end quote events in one era will change those in another and solving cases will change the map to unlock more mysteries elsewhere featuring a rather lovely black and white hand-drawn map and some dense mechanics crime crime o'clock is set to release on switch on june 20th i like that name it's clever yeah clever name crime o'clock I don't know about this game, but it looks like a puzzle thing. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Uh, this would be a game I, I wouldn't play myself, but I would watch people. Uh-huh. Yeah. There you go. I'm bad with puzzles. More fields. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, some type of puzzle games are really difficult to maneuver through. So. Yeah. All right. So Tesla Grad 2. Yeah. So Tesla Grad 2 and Tesla Grad re, uh, Remastered. We're going to see that next. So uh, Sh- Shadows uh, Over Loathing isn't the only game getting a shadow drop. Rain Games announced that Tesla Grad 2, a physics based puzzler, which you harness electromagnetic powers to make progress, is releasing on Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's out now. What's more, Rain Games is also releasing a remastered version of the original. Both games can be purchased together in the Tesla Grad Power Pack Edition, and you can check out uh, 
the the preview as well uh, over on IGN. So yeah. these look, look good. good. These look very good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you're into, I it, it, for some reason it's making me think of like Inside and uh, yeah, yeah yeah. What's the other one? Yeah. Uh, Limbo, but like Limbo. much more action than that than those games. Yeah. Monsters, mysteries, no. flappers, balance, <laughs> Fishman. everything with F. Oh no, goose, goose, goblins, yeah. government conspiracy, Department of Magic, and yeah, yeah. Cola War Soup. That's so weird. The stick figures. Oh yeah, the stick figures. Yeah. What, what are we doing here? Yeah. Uh, in <laughs> Japanese, we say boningen. Is, it, mm. is that a store over there in the U.S. or Japan? Cola Wars? <laughs> nah, no. Uh, but anyway, yeah, shadows over loathing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think we. Uh, it's set to release later this year, so we don't have a release date on it yet, but. Uh, yeah. It's a sequel to West of Loathing. Yeah. Never heard of West of Loathing. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, yeah, I mean, there's so many indies in the, you know, yeah. kind of trying to highlight yeah. their, their bunch here. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's hard. You know, like Xbox had their ID at Xbox event. Sony doesn't have an indie event, but, but they always have indies show up at their state of plays. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like Sony's sort of gone in the direction of like we're only gonna highlight like the 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 high end sort of indies that we we want to market that's possibly yeah. in our services, you know? Yeah, yeah. So Blasphemous Two gets first trailer and release window. Blasphemous re received its first official reveal. Uh, Following uh, the official announcement back on uh, uh, back last year, the new trailer features the return of the Penitent one and the original game's trademark pixel-based art, which will be paired with uh, newly added weapons, an expanded uh, move set, progressive uh, progression systems, and custom builds. So, yeah, it says great pixel art. I must say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great animations, yeah, I really like that the way that looks. Yeah, an That's eerie Metroidvania with gorgeous animations. I will Team definitely 17. keep my eye out. Team eye Seventeen on publishes one. a bunch of good stuff, actually. All right, here we go. Oxen Free Two: Lost Signals gets a release date. So after previously being delayed, so uh, Oxen Free Two, the sequel to the popular indie by Night School Studio and Netflix, officially has a release date. Set five years after the original game, it will star Riley as she returns to her hometown to investigate strange electromagnetic waves and will feature a new uh, walkie-talkie system that allows her to communicate with other characters. So Oxenfree 2 was previously delayed so that Night School Studios could make its, quote, best game ever, end quote, mm -hmm. uh, and is now scheduled to release on July 12th, with pre-orders available now. So this is the one that that made headlines because it's not on Xbox. It's on PlayStation. It's on Switch. It's on Netflix. <laughs> Apparently, I think Mac OS. <laughs> and they're just like, nope. The last two games the studio made on Xbox. One of them was on Game. Pa I think Oxenfree was on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. And now they're not. And everybody's wondering what the hell is the deal. And they the speculation has been that Netflix is like, yeah, we're just, they own the studio now. They bought them. Yeah. And that they are looking at Microsoft as a competitor and we're just not going to put it on their platform. But who knows if that's actually the case. Mm -hmm. It's a weird one. So it's, it's another weird one that, because usually it's Japanese studios that are like, yeah, we're just going to skip Xbox. But this is like <laughs> a studio that's, that's been on Xbox before. And then it would, you don't know why they're doing this. Yeah. Maybe the one platform's a sinking ship. I mean, no, he, that could be a too, bro. Like, who knows, right? Yeah. Well, let's just say the, the, the Japanese, out. the Japanese companies, are, they like to cater to their, they like to cater to their home market. 
Yeah, which I get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Here's paper. some other ones. A uh, paper trailer. So it comes out in August. Puzzles. Yes. Little Kitty Big City coming next year, 2024. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it's like uh, Stray, but but more stuff to do. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds <laughs> me of uh, uh, that Untitled Goose game. No, it's yeah. not like Stray. Chance of Senar <laughs> on September 5th. Coming September 5th. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Brotato. Yes. <laughs> Brotato coming this year at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the yeah. shotguns it has. Yeah, right. <laughs> Escape, Escape Academy fall. Complete coming in the fall. And then, of course, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach release DLC info and more. In addition to showing just... these numerous games, Nintendo also confirmed release dates for several games, the most notable of them being uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, Security oh. Breach, which uh, has now launched. So yep. it's out now. Yeah. Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. That, that's cool, because that's... Uh, the, oh, we're going into something else here. Right, that's <laughs> the next video. We will be, that, that we'll be talking about that later, yes. <laughs> is, uh, is like a Jet Set Radio type game. That yes. looks pretty cool. Indie game. Yeah, nice. good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, so that was the Indie Showcase, uh, Indie World Showcase that uh, came out uh, this past week. So, uh, yeah, go. Uh, uh, you can go over to IGN and check out that article for uh, all the information on all the games that we just showed. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. All righty. Okay, so now the, the video that uh, <laughs> actually started up like right after. Uh, so, Hi-Fi Rush. Obviously, uh, is our next story, of course. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there was some rumblings about whether or not, you know, uh, Hi-Fi Rush was a, a breakout hit or if it was a bust. So uh, here is the article for you. I will show you. So uh, uh, from uh, Pure Xbox. So basically, Jeff Grubb, you know, he's he's big into gaming media and stuff and uh he was talking uh, on his show uh, saying that uh, Hi-Fi Rush hadn't made as much money as expected. They were expecting it to make a lot more money. Uh, but then, of course, Aaron Greenberg got wind of that. And so, of course, he came out with a tweet. Uh, and he's quoted in this tweet as saying, Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us. And our players, in all key measurements and expectations, we couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Game Works delivered with this surprise release in quote. So yeah, I mean, Carl, I don't think Hi-Fi Rush has a physical release, right? It's only it does, digital. It does not. Yeah. It does not. Okay. So there you go. I mean, just think if it had a physical release, how much more it would made. But uh yeah, I mean uh maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So you, but you, uh, you, well you, you you never know. If it, uh, doing like for a smaller game like that, physical release isn't always a uh, gonna be a a hit seller yeah yeah it's weird i i think they should have done one i don't know why i get that it makes sense in that like it was a shadow drop so you know you, you weren't obviously going to do physical the same day but if you look at what nintendo did with Metroid prime remaster they they released it digitally and then the, the physical came later yeah. mm -hmm. i don't think there's anything wrong with that strategy yeah yeah this is it's weird like jeff grubb's sources are usually very good so mm -hmm. what he heard i don't know what it was really what they were talking about what what specific aspect they were talking about because i i can i can understand this game didn't probably didn't make as much money as maybe someone expected but well yeah and plus it was on game pass day one so I yeah mean, obviously yeah, yeah. I just don't know. It's like it, it sold well, pretty well on Steam. You know, it had a had a good player base number. Uh, so all the metrics make sense for it to be a big success. Everyone who was talking about it reviewed really well. Yeah. Um, I I have to I don't know, I have to assume that it's just a matter of there are people who are like thinking it just could have done better, but I think. I can't imagine that anyone within the company was like expectations were much higher than what it did because you, you know, you didn't market it and you shadow dropped it and you know, it's on game pass mm -hmm. and it's not, 
it's not this this isn't a game that you would yeah. expect to sell incredibly well well and the style of game too i mean a rhythm based game like this i mean right you know, uh compared to all the other types of, of games that are out there so yeah i mean i i think it's i think it's a great game and i think it's doing well so yeah i think it's it was it was amazing i played the whole thing i loved it i, I want more yes uh, yeah oh, they're I, gonna I, make I, a second one i think they're yeah. gonna make a sequel for sure yeah so I think there's potential to do something like, uh, you know, an ultimate edition or something and, and release a physical later this year. Yeah. Maybe add some content mm -hmm. or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this, I, like, I feel like you said, Carl, shadow dropping, game pass and all that may not really did not hurt help for the sell uh, sales numbers of this game. But like word of mouth spread have spread. I still constantly am hearing quite great things about Hi-Fi Rush. I have yet to play it yet, but it is a game I do want to sit when I do get the time to sit and play. Mm -hmm. And I, I always hear from people, yeah, you got to play it. You got to play it. You got to play it. It's on Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. Yeah. And it, you know, I, you might want to think twice about streaming it though, Burley, because yeah, I mean, no, I, you don't have to worry. A, there's well, there's a, a there's a mode, right? Uh, yep. That uh, go yeah. ahead, Carl. Go ahead. No, that's fine. You were just gonna say there is there's a streamer friendly mode. It, yes, so it just yeah. it's just replaced. The only songs you have to worry about are the boss battle songs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but those they they replace them in the streamer mode with the original music. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know. Also, it's it's not on playstation is not on switch and xbox has a smaller install base so like yeah it's very obvious why it did what it did but i think it made a lot of waves for where it is and xbox needs games like this and whether or not they sold incredibly well i don't think is as relevant as it's in the zeitgeist conversation of game yeah you know and reviewed incredibly well and they're going to it's gonna show up on game of the year lists for sure yeah yeah, and then of course you have you know certain you know media outlets too that are you know pro more more siding with PlayStation pro PlayStation. They're probably gonna they're, they're probably the ones that were jumping on this and saying oh it's 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 a dud you know it didn't make enough money. But uh, oh, I just I don't agree with that. But oh, I saw I saw the people on Twitter Twitter this has gone crazy. People are comparing it to Forspoken. I mean, like, oh god, for, for spoken <laughs> made its money and it's better. I'm yeah. like, in what way? I'm like, they had to Square had to buy that studio and bring them in. That game didn't make its money, and it's like got nine inch nails, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I had to obviously assume for spoken cost a lot more money to make. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh, 100. And, and the best ever are like, oh, yeah, for spoken was reviewed better. It's like. No, no, not even no. close. <laughs> not even close. And it's like you play as a guy that played the demo for Forspoken. That demo did more harm than good because yeah. it showed, oh, this is how the game plays, and we're not gonna—they're not giving you tutorials. Oh, okay, I'll—I can skip this. Yeah, but you know what? Thanks for uh, bringing this up and getting everybody to talk about Hi-Fi Rush again. You should play it. It's fantastic. Yes, it's amazing. It's a great game. Yes, I definitely will play it and give my thoughts later in the year when I do get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the studio is amazing too. So some great people working out there in Tokyo. So. Yeah, it it put Tango GameWorks on the map for a lot of people. Yeah, and people weren't really you know they made Evil Within one and two and they're good games. You know, yes. but I don't think a lot of people are saying like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to see what they do. But yeah, they did this cycle break. And, and now everyone's like, yes, this is OK. Now we need to see what what they can come up with next. Yeah. 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 The evil within cycle break out here in Japan. Yeah. Cycle yeah, break. Ghostwire cycle break Tokyo. Uh, they Ghostwire also Tokyo. did. Yeah. Which I think looks pretty interesting. Uh, I haven't played it. It's on Game Pass now. Yeah. And PlayStation uh, Plus Extra, I believe. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, so it's time for the topic of the show, guys. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the 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 sequel to uh, the the last game, uh, you know, Jedi Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. Thank you, Burley. 
It's coming. It's, it's coming this week. So I thought we'd talk about, you know, uh, some of the other games that are uh, coming down the pipeline uh, through the, of course, the, the Star Wars uh, gaming franchise uh, and uh, what we would like to see uh, come out of the Star Wars franchise when it comes to video games in the future. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are excited to play uh, Jedi Survivor. I'm one of them. Uh, really, really excited and looking forward to it. Um, to see uh, the continuing saga of Cal Kestis and and uh, where he ends up and all. Uh, so, uh, yeah, guys. I mean, uh, I mean, let's start with uh, first with uh, what we would like to see. Uh, what kind of games we would like to see created in the Star Wars universe when it comes to uh, video games uh, into the foreseeable future. Um, obviously, The Mandalorian season, season three just finished up. Uh, of course, uh, we've got Ahsoka coming up soon. So maybe we can see a game with like Mando or Ahsoka, something like that. Uh, and then, of course... We got the news uh, at the you know Star Wars celebration in London that uh, you know three new movies are in the works too, uh, and also uh, yeah there was news that uh, John Boyega actually might be coming back to yeah. uh, to join Daisy Ridley again in the uh, the new Jedi Order film that they're going to be making. So I'm hoping that happens for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, what would you what would you like to see, guys, uh, when it comes to the Star Wars franchise and future projects? I mean, um, maybe we're going to be talking about the stuff that that they've already announced later. But, uh, you know, something other than those that have been announced. What, what do you want to see? Um, Carl, I'll start with you. Uh, uh, you know, I want more original character stuff. Um don't need to see yeah more like fill in the blanks of this character's life or story okay same mm -hmm. thing with the, the shows i i don't i don't want any more fill in the blank stuff so like you know there are a lot of people like make a mandalorian game and i'm like yeah i you know okay maybe maybe not din jar and then like give me a, an original mandalorian character mm -hmm. uh that you can Bo follow crease no because again she's not <laughs> she's, she's already got like yeah. Plenty yeah. of story from all across the different shows. Yeah, I don't the way. fit into another another time where she tried to become the the leader of Mandalore and the dark had the dark saber and then lost it and then got it back and then blah 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 like a yeah, million yeah. times that just happened. Yeah, like, yeah. We don't need that. Okay, just give me. Honestly, I don't even want a Mandalorian because Mandalorian has got has made me tired of Mandalorians. Like, there's there's just there's so many of them and I had enough. You know. Just give me an original, like I don't know, like a Han Solo or type, or a, uh, something more techie. You know, give me a techie guy. You know, there's a lot of cool tech in in Star Wars, and you don't need the Force. You know, and tech works really well for video games. This is a, there's a ton of cool features and extra things you can do with tech. Yeah, well, like a um, like a character like uh, Cassie Andor. I mean, I mean that was such you know an original character when Rogue One came out. I mean, it's like nobody knew about him. I mean, so mm -hmm. make and make a game with another original character that we don't know anything about. You know, that would be awesome. Yeah, oh, and Doctor Afra um, from the comics. You know, again, like you know, that's not yeah. that character already exists and has a story. So like, but. But that type of like we're we're not doing your traditional like Jedi type you know we've seen already. Uh, yeah. Give us something a little different there, you know, or a turn based RPG. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're gonna bring that up. We we should have seen that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Burley, how about you, Matt? We're always yeah. open for that. Yeah. You you know what? Uh, I think we would be cool to see. I know we got squadrons a few years ago. Yeah. But uh. Make a brand new X-wing versus Tie Fighter game. You do that. That I would love to see that with with what we can do with Unreal Five now. Mm -hmm. See that. That'd be something great. Like Carl, I I agree with Carl. I want original characters and not just fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd like to let's get some. We don't always have to be on the good side. Let's get some stuff. Uh, games where you're playing on the side of the Empire. 
Get stuff there. Burley, yeah. I knew you were going to bring that up, man. It's hey, like, I'm okay with it. And then Dr. Burley Afra, loves the Empire so much. Dr. Afra is sort of on the bad side, right? She's like yeah. working mm -hmm. for Darth Vader, sort of. And she has yeah. a, an evil version of like basically C3PO yeah. and R2D2 on her, on her side. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. let's look at the, these are some of the games that have been confirmed that are coming. So uh, Star Wars Hunters coming to the Switch and Android iOS. So Star yeah. Wars Hunters is a, a new team-based team, <laughs> team -based multiplayer game coming to mobile and Switch made by developer Zynga and Lucasfilm Games. Star Wars Hunters takes place after the fall of the Galactic Empire. I totally forgot about that game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars Hunters was originally set to launch sometime in 2022 before being pushed back to release sometime this year. So uh, we shall see. But, uh, and then push back to next year. So knows? 2025, we may have the game. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, on the Switch 2, right, Burley? On the Switch 2. Yes. Yeah. Maybe so I'll launch, Maybe launch they're going to wise up and put it on PlayStation and Xbox as well. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we got uh, Respawns, uh, Star Wars first-person shooter. So... Uh, Currently, they uh, respawn is working on as of yet untitled. It's an untitled Star Wars first person shooter. Uh, respawn game director Peter Hirschman is leading the development of the project, which was first revealed in January of last year. Hirschman is no stranger to the Star Wars franchise in the gaming space, having previous experience working on the original Star Wars Battlefront games. Uh, so, the original uh, ones, the good ones. Yeah. As well as uh, Star Wars A Force Unleashed. See, this needs to be uh, Burley's like Empire game, where you just play as like some sort of stormtrooper guy, and you're just killing rebels. There you go. I'd love that. <laughs> or even even someone who starts out as like a, a low growth stormtrooper works his way up in the Empire. Uh, uh, There's also the uh, the Dark Forces um, Jedi Knight uh, games, yeah. right? That were oh, I love I game. love Dark Forces yeah. growing up. Here you go. Yeah. Star Wars Eclipse, first announced during the Game Awards of 2021. Star Wars Eclipse is a new action adventure from Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human developer Quantic Dream and Lucasfilm Games, described as a branching narrative game. Eclipse takes place in the High Republic era in an, quote, uncharted region of the Outer Rim, end quote. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. That'll be interesting, though. Again, doing something different, probably gonna have all original characters, today. or maybe higher public characters from the books that like no one really knows yet. They're, they're gonna introduce yeah. us to. Yeah. 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 Uh, this guy looks like he's the character from uh, what was it in Boba Fett, the other bounty hunter. The name isn't coming to me right right now, uh, but uh, oh, I know yeah. who you mean, but I can't remember yeah. the name. Yeah, Cat Bane was it. Yeah, Bane. Oh, I, yeah, Cat Bane. Yeah, Cat Bane, but yeah, supposedly Boba, yeah, yeah, and him were fighting. So, Knights of the Old Republic remake. So, it's set to deliver a new version of the much-loved RPG from 2003 to PS5 and PC. First revealed during the PlayStation 2021 showcase, got, our very, got the very first look at a revamped Darth Raven, who was a customizable pro protagonist in the original game. The remake is coming from uh, Asper and Luca, uh, Lucasfilm Games, former which has previously worked on several remasters of previously uh, previous Star Wars games, including Jedi Knight Two, Jedi Outcast. So, and that Man, that game's in de development trouble because I remember yeah. so Sony had saw, saw another bunch of industry people also saw it and were not very happy with it. So this game, who knows? I, I I am on like I think we said back in the day we wouldn't be surprised if this got canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, Ubisoft open world Star Wars game. There, Ubisoft is currently working on the new open world Star Wars game in collaboration with Disney and Lucasfilm Games, with development led by the division studio Massive Entertainment. The upcoming Ubisoft Star Wars game is set to be a story dri driven adventure. Creative director uh, Julian. Uh, Garrity said in a post from Ubisoft that, quote, we want to make it a unique game in the saga with a captivating story and a set of characters that players can relate to and connect with, end quote. So, yeah, th this is one I'm really looking forward to because mm -hmm. they I could they could do something incredible. I mean, if you, if you look at what they did with Hogwarts Legacy and, and taking, you know, that type of franchise and making an open world type of game, Star Wars has that mm, potential and much more. 
Yeah. Massive. Yeah, this, um, they've done some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This is one I can't wait to see. That yeah. that 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 one uh, Ubisoft, but yeah. especially because the flip will make sense when you do dive off the Eagle Towers. I mean, the whatever towers mm-hmm. they're going to call them. And finally, we've got uh, Amy Hennings Star Wars game, an as yet untitled Star Wars game. So from Sky da- Skydance New Media in collaboration with Lucasfilm Games, veteran writer and director Amy Henning will be at the helm of the studio, who's well-known for previously working on big hits such as Uncharted and Jack and Daxter. The new Star Wars game is described as a narrative-driven action-adventure, and while not much else has been revealed about the project, a report suggests it could be could well be a revival of a prior Star Wars project that was ultimately shuttered. While still unconfirmed, a leak pointed towards it uh, bringing back uh, Project uh, Ratag, a game set during the Rebel Alliance era, that was once in development at EA Studio Visceral. Project is still likely quite a ways off, so uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, anyway, those are the games that are yeah that are have been confirmed that are being worked on. So uh, yeah, I mean interesting uh, future uh, for the Star Wars franchise. But yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, let's let's get some new characters, you know. <laughs> You know, yeah, they're, they're just going to keep making a lot of Star Wars games at this point. Yeah. Just like when, making... when do you think we'll get Battlefront 3? Well, reportedly, they, they they canceled that. Like, it was there was a, mm-hmm. recently someone said that they were really close to, to making that, and then uh-huh. it got canceled like really, really late in the, in the uh, some sort of I don't know, I don't know if it was in development already or just like you know. They, they had a lot going. They were pre-production. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, oh, Battlefront, yeah. They, they screwed that up, and, and that's why I don't know. I, and I don't really care. I don't think we need another Battlefront. You, know, you, had, you know, whatever. Battlefront, Battlefront 2 is still, the, it has a pretty big size player base. I mean, yeah. So. yeah. Well, once once they fixed Battlefront 2, like the, the one they put out in 2016, 2017, or whatever year it was, like, cause I got it because they gave it away free on PS Plus. After they fixed everything and took, like, cause they had to, it's not a bad game. It's still fun and it's something. If I wanted to, I could easily download and hop in and play. Yeah. So I don't think we need another that, but we know we're gonna get another Lego game. It's just no, a matter yeah. of what are we gonna? We're gonna get Lego Mandalorian. I wouldn't be surprised. Or we've got that or something like that. Yeah. So. I don't know if they'll go Ahsoka. I th- I could see them going Mandalorian. Ahsoka will be a character, yeah, like a, a character within the game, probably. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Jedi Jedi Survivor, Burley. You got to fight a ranker. Yep. <laughs> I've got this game pre-ordered, and it's a, they've released actually the file size. Even on oh, console. Oh, yeah. It's like 147 and a half gigs. Wow. So I'm glad I got that one terabyte <laughs> SSD extra <laughs> in my PS5. That's too much, man. It is. Man. I'm glad. I'm glad I had some PS Star money, of the points that paid paid for a decent amount. <laughs> yeah. The game looks incredible. I sh- I should really get that. Should get a PS Five and play it. Yes, we know. Why well, I don't need a PS Five. I got a Series X. <laughs> be you fine. Like God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon. Well, yeah, I need. I Astros, do need that for Ast- that. Astro's Playroom. <laughs> no, Astro's Ratchet garbage. Clank. Ratchet and take that. Ratchet's guard. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 coming this year. Yeah, that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I have to play Returnal? My dad. Uh, uh, re- All right. Uh, we'll let you slide on Returnal. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cut me some All slack right. on that one. All right, guys. It's time to uh, talk about the upcoming new game releases. So our picks of the week for the week of April 24th through the 30th. So you can go and check out all of the releases on releases.com. So the link is below there for you. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the game releases. So I think, Burley, you are first this week. So go. Oh, I'm first this week. Yeah, your pick of the week is Strayed Lights. Explore a dark, or- orniac world of rampant nature and corrupted cities. Embody a tiny, 
tiny being of light on its path towards awakening. Fight your inner demons and restore your balance. Coming Tuesday, April 25th, coming to PC, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series. Nice. Interesting. Just, great visual style. Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the visual style. So good and just like like it doesn't look like you're going to be in these fights you're just going to be locked in an area like you've mm, it's your yeah. 3d so you've got it's not just 2d so it, this is just going to be crazy these fights hmm. interesting hmm. i expect a lot of deaths for when i mm -hmm. when i play what this. else has this video done is it embers yeah yes i, I believe know. it is ember studio Numbers. Yeah, I love uh, the but, color palettes in this. So. Oh, I love that that like the color is changing on the, on the hits. Yeah. So that's I'm sure that's going to be some kind of cool mechanic of you know oh you hit it this it changed its element you hit it now. Nice. This might be their first one because I don't see anything else on their website. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Been a few other games out with that type of art style too, but uh, yeah. All right, Carl, you're up next. All right, we got the last case of Benedict Fox coming on April 27th to PC and Xbox One, Xbox Series, launching into Game Pass. Plunge into a realm of decaying memories as Benedict Fox, a self-proclaimed detective, tethered to his demonic companion. Exploit this unholy bond to investigate the minds of recently departed, gathering clues while unraveling the enigma of a sprawling, dilapidated mansion, the scene of a young couple's gruesome murder and their child's disappearance. Engage with a sinister, captivating world filled with secret societies, forbidden rituals, and ruthless crimes, all portrayed through a mesmerizing Burton-esque art style in this arcane adventure. Yeah. Very Burton-esque in indeed. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was one that was shown at, at the one of the Xbox showcases and yeah. uh yeah, and it's a Metroidvania style game. It's great art style. Sounds like an interesting story to it. Mm -hmm. This is this is one of those that could be, you know, one of those big indie darlings, but who knows? You know, you never know. <laughs> the art style, a little bit of it kind of reminds me of Ori. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff. All right. The case, the last case of Benedict Fox. All right. So I don't know why the indie showcase popped up. I was going to say, is you're, are you, you, you going for the cats? <laughs> no, I'm not going for the cats one, uh, of course. So let me try to get to mine. Okay, here we go. All right. So. Obviously, my pick of the week is uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is the next chapter of the beloved Star Wars action adventure series chronicling the, jur the journey of Jedi Cal Kestis. So, uh, it's set, uh, Survivor picks up five years after the events of Jedi Fallen Order. Cal must stay one step ahead of the Empire's constant pursuit as he begins to feel the weight of being one of the last remaining Jedi in the galaxy. So accompanied by his trusty companion, BD-1, Cal will meet an ally, uh, an ally himself with an array of unique and interesting characters on his journey. Jedi Survivor will expand on the series' dynamic combat in new and innovative ways. In order to survive, Cal must learn new skills and grow his connection with the Force. There's your ranker, Burley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X on the 28th so next friday yeah so good stuff oh this uh, this is a game i cannot wait and especially put this up on not just streaming it but also putting this up on my 4k tv just really mm -hmm. see how pretty this thing gets yeah yeah gotta play it in 4k 30 right <laughs> 4k 30 okay but that, I mean, that's the series x uh, uh, the ps5 <laughs> it's uh, 4k 60 it won't be 4k 60 <laughs> yeah. it'll be like uh 1440 at best if uh, dynamic <laughs> yeah 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 all righty yep 
so coming out on the 28th guys next friday so really excited to to, to start playing that so, yeah. Oh, yeah good stuff all righty okay so next up uh carl we've got uh of course game pass so uh what game is pass. what is coming to game pass at the end of this month and then of course in early may where we got coming got some of the greatest video games ever no <laughs> If we have, you, yeah, in your mind, yes. I'm joking. I, I don't know. I, there's, there's good stuff. I actually, yeah, I like, yeah, I like this. Uh, I like this week. This week's yeah. here. Uh, or this this uh, drop here. So we got Coffee Talk Episode Two: Hibiscus and Butterfly, mm -hmm. April twentieth. So that one's out now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this one, this sequel, well, not sequel, Episode Two, right? Mm -hmm. Two interesting, favorably, you know, reviewed game here. Um, it's like a, I would say it's a a uh what do you call it like interact like a story driven interactive sort of thing okay uh, medieval dynasty uh hitting xbox one that was already on other platforms um april 20th already out homestead arcana just came out on the 21st mm -hmm. cloud pc xbox series xs no game no xbox one i think medieval dynasty to their uh or medieval medieval dynasty you can play on cloud too i think uh, yeah, I think because yeah. they're yeah. just announcing the Xbox One release. Right, right. That was already on the other platforms. Yeah. Um, we have Cassette Beasts coming to PC only on April 26th, which looks like a cool turn-based RPG, like Pokemon style thing. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. I, I, that one looks really interesting, but it's only on PC, but it is coming to Xbox later, so... It will be on Game Pass on Xbox if you're interested in that. One. Nice. Uh, then you got Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle Special Edition on Cloud Console PC, April 27th. And that's one that I'm actually really interested in. I'm definitely going to play because it has Persona 4 characters in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, this one is is a it's a cross between a couple of other games, uh, so Blaze Blue and, and of course Persona 4 Arena. Mm -hmm. uh, which has a couple of Persona 3 characters in it as well. Mm. Nice. Uh, then we had The Last Case of Benedict Fox also on April 27th, console and PC, mm -hmm. as well as May 2nd, Redfall, cloud, yeah. console, PC. Yeah. So interested to see how that plays out. I mean, yeah. uh, with yeah. resolution and everything else and what everybody's you know, saying about it. So be interesting yeah like arcane makes really good games so yeah i expect it to be a good game i don't know i don't i never really thought that anything shown for this game ever really said that this was going to be a big success yeah and if you look at the history of arcane that's just how it goes the, these games are yeah. reviewed well people there's a cult following for them but they never for some reason hit never the, break the in mainstream time. Yeah, hmm. try as they might, because look at look what happened with Deathloop. Uh, PlayStation had the exclusivity on that, and they marketed the hell out of it. They showed it at every event possible. Uh, there, yep. there was, you know, there were people like, "All right, we've seen this enough already. Can we please not? We don't need to show it every time." But they kept showing it, kept showing yeah. it, yeah. and it got great reviews, and it didn't sell that well. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Who knows? All right. All right. So those are our Game Pass games uh, for the end of this month and into May. So of course, uh, the next on our next uh, show, we'll probably have some more drops for the the beginning and um, uh, further into May uh, for Game Pass. So stay tuned for that. All right. And now for some uh, programming notes. Obviously, uh, Burley and I we did our uh, of course our recap. Uh, and discussion of the season finale of The Mandalorian, Chapter 24, The Return. So uh, that is up here on the YouTube channel, here on the Arena Production. So you can uh, check that out. As well as, of course, our Season 2 uh, trailer reactions for uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So we're really excited to bring you uh, recap episodes when that uh, uh, premieres in June. So we're looking forward to season two of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Really, really excited for that. And as well as uh, Star Trek Picard, 
the final season and the season finale, uh, The Last Generation, our recap of that episode, which was an amazing episode. So please check out our recap of that as well. And of course, for our video games, of course, uh, our video game shows, of course, Extra Take is our supplemental series to the Arena Multi-Platform Gaming News Podcast. And our next episode, we're going to be breaking down and reacting to, of course, uh, Horizon Forbidden West's Burning Shores DLC. So uh, please stay tuned for that. That should be up uh, probably around tomorrow. So uh, yeah, uh, please go and check that out as well. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff uh, here on the Arena Productions. And of course, you can also get uh, the uh, extra take episodes as well as our Star Trek and uh, Star Wars content on our Patreon uh, ad free. Uh, so if you become a patron and help support our content over there, get all of our stuff ad free over there. All right. So uh, it's time to talk about the games that we're going to be playing this coming week. Uh, I'm going to try to finish up that uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla final DLC. Uh, and then I want to jump uh, into to Burning Shores as well as into uh, to Jedi Survivor when it comes out on Friday. So, uh, Carl, how about you? Still Persona Four? Yeah, yeah I am. I'm gonna play some of that Blaze Blue cross tag. Um, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. make sure I jump into Levi because like I keep wanting to play one of these Arc System games. Like Guilty Gear Strive came out um, mm-hmm. recently on on Game Pass, and because uh, they look incredible, and I, I used to love fighting games, so I just want to you know. This was like. It'll be fun to play as some of my, my favorite characters in the other game that I'm currently playing. So. Uh-huh. Oh, in the last case of Bandit of Fox, I do I do really want to try, so but I don't know if I'll yeah. get the time to do it. I see. Yeah, Burley, how about you? Uh, well, obviously, Burning Shores, be going through more of that, finish the story, do some of the more on the side content on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, maybe try and finish Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, okay. Through, through the week nice. and I'll obviously star a star wars yeah jedi, jedi, jedi survivor. survivor yep all right yep so yeah exciting times yeah we're getting towards the end of april here and into may so you know redfall is around the corner as well so uh, a lot of the bigger games are starting to release so looking forward to that yeah and of course we got zelda coming out in may as well so mm-hmm. big month yeah. big month coming up so uh, we're looking forward to bringing you uh, all of that here on the Arena Productions and on the Arena Multi-Platform Gaming News Podcast. So, Zelda's running at a, at a nice locked 27 frames per second. <laughs> Tw- 27? <laughs> That's way too high. Oh, uh, 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, so it's time for our indie recording artist spotlight to end the show. So this week's spotlight is on Oliver Michael. Oliver Michael is a music producer and composer living in a small mountain town called Rossland, where he loves making his heartfelt music. So having spent half his life in South Africa and half in the UK and Canada has given him a unique perspective, which is ever present in the music he makes. He creates an emotional connection with his audience by making films uh, more memorable with the textures of the music he composes from the title song of his album called Forever. So this has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 130. I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. We hope to catch you in the next one. So take care, everyone, and enjoy the outro. Peace out.